was a time in his life where he was struggling and he was sad and, and he needed help. And who was the first person he thought to talk to when he needed help? God. God, his father. That's right. And who were the men that went everywhere with Jesus? Who were the men, huh, that went everywhere with Jesus? Jesus' disciples. His disciples. How many of them were there? No. Twelve. No. There were twelve no. disciples. And so the disciples would go with Jesus, and they would see him pray, and they would ask him a very important question. What question was that? What question would they ask Jesus? Daniel? Very good. Both you and Clarice knew that. Teach us how to pray, okay? And so, did you know that too? So, so Jesus taught his disciples a prayer, okay? So we're going to say that prayer together. Now, I want you all to show me how you kneel down. Show me how we kneel down when we talk to Jesus so he can take our prayers to his father. Very good. So we kneel down. We don't lay on the floor, do we? Show me what we do with our hands. Okay? We don't look all over the place, do we? Our eyes are closed. Our heads are bowed. We're going to sing, God is so good. Then we're going to say our prayer, okay? God is so
something like that. I learned that when I was your age, and Mr. and Mrs. Dunder taught it to me, and I still remember it. <laughs> chair that the king would sit in is called? Anybody know? The throne. It's called a throne. Can you say that? The throne. So we know that this person, because they're sitting on this big chair, and because they're wearing this special hat called a crown, that this person is the king. Who is this person? The king. Now in our story, in our lesson, we actually know the name of this king. Does anybody know the name of this king? It's King David. And King David is the same guy that killed the giant Goliath when he was just a young boy, right? Now, when David killed the giant Goliath, does anybody remember that story? Yeah! There was another man who was king. Does anybody know the name of the king who was king before King David? Saul. Saul was the king, and Saul had a son. Saul had a son, and Saul's son and David were best friends. They, they were almost exactly alike, and the Bible says that they were such good friends. They actually saw each other more like brothers. They loved each other. Do you remember the name? of King Saul's son. Jonathan. That was he David's died. best friend. Now, he I, you just heard, so I'm going to have you say it. His name was Jonathan. Can you say that? Jonathan. Jonathan. And actually, we have a Jonathan in our house. I don't know if you knew that. How many of you know Eden's brother, Isaac? Yeah, some of you know Eden's brother, Isaac. He's a, he's a bigger boy. But most of you probably didn't know I'm going to tell you this secret, and you can all tell him that you know it now. Most of you don't know that Isaac is his middle name. Jonathan is his first name. But Jonathan, and he's named after that same Jonathan, Jonathan was David's best friend. And it was sad, though, because when King Saul stopped following Jesus, stopped following Jesus, Samuel the prophet told him that he was going to not be king, that God was no longer going to bless him, and Saul could have chosen to follow Jesus, but he didn't. And David knew that God had asked him to be king, but he was waiting. There was many times where he could have said, get out of the way, Saul, it's my turn to be king, right? But David never did that. Now, why I'm telling you this story is because we're going to learn about this man right here. This man... This man, do you see what he has here? Does anybody know what he a has wall. right here? Well, what do you think that might be? A slingshot. It's not a slingshot. He didn't bring a slingshot to seeing King David. Crutch. It's a crutch. It's a crutch. And we're going to learn about him. We're going to learn about him. But Jonathan also knew that David was supposed to be king. And one time, David and Jonathan were talking. And Jonathan said, look, I know that Jesus has chosen you. I know that God is going to take care of you, and one day you'll be king. And I want you to make a special promise to me. Has anybody ever made a promise? Yeah. Have you ever made a promise? Uh, Mom, yeah. if you let me stay up a little late, I promise. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if 
I give you this early, you've got to promise you're going to eat all of your food. Oh, if I let you have, have you ever made promises? No. If I play just a little longer, I promise I'll go clean my room as soon as I'm done. Right? All these promises. Well, David made a really big promise to his friend John. And the promise was that their families would be friends all the time, no matter what happened. That even if Jonathan died, that David would be a friend to all of Jonathan's family. And so many years have passed. Sadly, when Saul stopped following Jesus, Israel got into another war. There was no Goliath, but they were fighting those armies again. And King Saul and even his son Jonathan, they yeah. died in the battle. And so a lot of years have Don't passed. Drop the arrow. And David is now on the throne, and he remembers that he's made a special promise to Jonathan. Who did he make the special promise to? Jonathan. Jonathan. You're good listeners. And he says, you know what? I want to know if there's anybody left in Jonathan's family because I want to keep my promise. And I want to do something nice. And so he's the king. So he, he just called his servant over. Mr. Servant. All right, we're going to put him over here for a second. Mr. Servant. Come here, Mr. Servant. Mr. Servant comes over. Yes, my lord, the king. What can I do for you? I made a special promise to my friend Jonathan. And I want to know, Mr. Servant, is there anybody left in Jonathan's family? Is there anyone at all left? I don't know, my lord, the king. Let me go find out. And he goes and he talks to the people. And they go and talk to some more people, servants. And they find out, guess what? There is somebody. There's actually a son that Jonathan has. And he's still alive. My lord, the king. Yes, yes. Do you remember when you asked me to find out if there's anybody left in Jonathan's family? There is. Jonathan has a son. What does Jonathan have? A son. A son. Oh, I'm so glad you were able to find out. Please, bring him here. I want to meet him. So Mr. Servant says, yes, your majesty, my lord, the king. And he goes and he finds Jonathan's son. Now, does anybody know from studying your lesson what Jonathan's son's it's name was? slingshot. That's not a slingshot. Remember, that was that's his crutch. Whoa. We're going to find out why in just a second. You guys are doing really good listening. Do you know what his name was? It's a big, long lame. name. 12 letters. Now, when Pastor Aaron spells his name, I only use five letters. I use an A, A, R, O, N. That's how you spell my name. Eden uses less. E, D, E, N. She only uses four. But Jonathan's son, when he spelled his name, he had to use 12 letters. And his Let's name is really long. Well. Oh, you guys Let's know it. Can you say that? Mephibosheth. Can you say that? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Has anyone ever met somebody named Mephibosheth? No. 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 I have. Weird name. What? I have. When I was a missionary kid in Africa, I met a young boy named Mephibosheth. What? But that was the only time in my whole life that I ever met anyone named. Can you say it with me? Mephibosheth. Now, Mr. Servant comes and he says, Mephibosheth, actually it was one of, it was one of a guy that was helping keep Saul's uh, lands. Mephibosheth, King David wants to see you. Now, Mephibosheth is kind of worried because usually what happens when a king becomes king and there's anybody left in the family of the other king, that is not good. Because the king usually, if they're not kind and if they haven't made a special promise to their friend, the king usually wants everybody in the other king's family to not be alive. So Mephibosheth's a little worried, but the servant says, no, no, no. David wants to talk to you because he made a special promise to your dad and he wants you to come all the way to the palace to see him. And so Mephibosheth, he comes into Watch. the palace. Watch his cut. Well, and he's here before David. And David notices something when Mephibosheth is coming in because Mephibosheth isn't just walking normally like this. Mephibosheth actually has to have a 
Well, has one, but Mephibosheth might have had two because something sad happened when he was a little boy. Mephibosheth's feet, his legs, they're messed up. They've been hurt. And so Mephibosheth is limping, and he can't hardly walk, and he has to use kind of like a crutch to get there. And he meets David, and David says, Mephibosheth, it's so good to meet you. Your father was my best friend. And I'm so glad you're alive because I made a promise to him that I would take care of and that I would make sure that everything was okay with all of his family and you're alive and I want to do, I want to do special and nice things for you. And Mephibosheth said, oh, my Lord, the king, I don't even know what to say. And David said, what happened to your legs, Mephibosheth? What did David ask him? What happened to your legs? Now, this is what was sad. You see, when Mephibosheth was young, he was probably your age, the war happened when his grandpa, King Saul, and when his dad, Jonathan, were killed. And when the people in the palace heard it, they were afraid, and they thought the soldiers would come. And so there was a lady. It was a nurse who was taking care of Mephibosheth when he was young, and she decided, she decided, I'm going to borrow you because you're mine, that she was going to run away. And she could run faster than little Mephibosheth because he was just a little boy. And she didn't want him to be caught by the soldiers. So she picked up Mephibosheth. Oh, and she's all scared. And as she starts to run really fast in the palace, something happens and she oh, drops Mephibosheth. Breaks his legs, both of his legs, and his legs never heal right. And that's why when he met David, he was just limping. But David said, well, Mephibosheth, I want you to know something. I've never met you, but because I loved your dad, because I made that promise, I love you. And I want you to know I'm giving you all of the land that belonged to your grandpa, King Saul. It's all going to be yours. And my special servant man, the one whom I asked to go find you, he's going to take care of it for you, he and all of his sons. But not just that. That's going to be your land. I don't want you to go home, Mephibosheth. I want you to stay here with me, and you're going to come eat at the king's table every day for the rest of your life. Because I made a promise to your dad, and I want you to know that because I love him, I love you. And you're going to be taken care of for the rest of your life. Now, how do you think that made him feel? Was he worried anymore? No. He knew David loved him, and his life changed a lot in that very day. Now, there's a lot of lessons we can learn, but there's one that I really want you to think about. You know, as we grow up, especially as you get bigger, and not even now, and, the, and, and even now, friends are a very important thing that you're going to want in your life. How many of you want friends? Yeah? We like to have people to play with and spend time with. And one of the things that we can learn from this story is David was a good friend because David made his promises and he kept them. You see, as friends, sometimes, sometimes we have to remember the promises we've made. And it isn't just about being friends. One of the things that we want to be as Christians is people who keep their word. We can keep our word as if somebody helps us. Do you know who helps people keep their word so they don't forget or they don't change their mind? They don't tell lies. Who does that? Do you know who helps us to do that? Jesus. 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 So how many of you want to ask Jesus to help you to be a man like or a, a girl or a boy like David and always keep your word and even remember if you've forgotten the promises that you've made so that you can be faithful? Do you want Jesus to help you be faithful? I want to be faithful. Well, I want to invite you to kneel down with me on your knees right in front of your chair where you're at. And we're going to thank Jesus that we have stories in the Bible where people were faithful friends. And we want to ask Jesus to help us to be someone who keeps our word, that we would always tell the truth, and that when we say we're going to do something, when we make promises to other people, 
that we would be faithful to do it. And we need Jesus' help. So when we pray, we want to fold our hands. The reason we fold our hands is because we don't want them to get distracted during prayer. And we want to close our eyes. And the reason we close our eyes is because we don't want to look around and get distracted during prayer because we're talking to, to Jesus. Right? So can you fold your hands? Bow your head. Close your eyes. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you that King David remembered Mephibosheth and that he was nice to him and that he kept his promise. Jesus, please help us to be true and honest and to keep our promises because you live in our hearts. Thank you for these Bible stories and we love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. When you can't sleep, don't count the sheep. Talk to the shepherd. Who's the shepherd? Do you know who our shepherd is? Jesus. That's right, Jesus is our shepherd. And us is the sheep. Yeah. We are, I came on time. You know what I heard one time? Jesus is, listen, Jesus is the shepherd. Guess who I am? Such a lovely secret. I'm his little lamb. Have you ever heard that one?